I, I, I understand that a lot of this stuff you probably have heard before, or maybe you've seen it before. Um, I think some of this stuff, what we've done is we've put a little spin on some of it in order to make it a little bit more effective. But this is the, the killer open house strategy, which the idea behind this is a two-step open house. Um, right now, I mean, you do an open house, you're going to get what? How many buyers in an open house? I mean, That's well, we did one in the day yeah. before Easter, and we only got like 10. Yeah? It yeah. was nothing, but so a month ago, we had over 200 in the well, weekend. 200 people in a Yeah, meeting. we had yeah. like 100 and 100 easily. There, there was one in our neighborhood, and the whole up. street had cars going all the way down. So it was the craziest thing I ever yeah. saw. It so if you do this, insane. you're going to drive a lot of demand to the property. And I want to be clear once again, is on the killer open house strategy, it doesn't have to be your listing. Okay? It just has to be a listing. It doesn't have to be a steps listing. Okay, when I had my company, um, my, my little real estate company, we did a lot of volume, but we didn't have a lot of agents. I couldn't even offer open houses because I didn't have the bandwidth to, to service them. So I had a, a couple agents with other companies who kind of knew that, and so they would do my open houses for me all the time. If you're focusing on a geography and you see a sign pop up, there is nothing wrong with calling the agent and saying, hey, are you planning on doing an open house on that property? And if they say no, say, would you mind if I did an open house on that property? I'd be happy to. 20 times in a row, they're going to tell you no. One time, they're going to say yes. And then you've built a relationship and you've helped somebody. Yeah. Because there is a lot of agents out there that they just don't, they, they don't have the bandwidth or they don't believe in them, right? For me, I was not great at, I'm not great at converting an open house. I'm too, I have too high pressure. Um, I know that about me. So I don't do open houses, right? Um, but there's a lot of agents who do very well from open houses, very well. So, so here's the idea behind the killer open house strategy. And in order to do this, you've got to plan ahead, okay? You've got to kind of plan ahead because ideally, if this is on the market date, uh, which is the date it goes active in the MLS, we want to be, we want to start early, okay? We want to start early. And so the first thing we want to do is set up a neighbors only exclusive open house just for the neighbors. Now, we do not want the neighbors wandering through at the same time as the regular people. Why? Because what? Because they know everything about the house already. No, no, close. Why? They're gawking and they're taking away your time from other people. No. You might mention negatives. Nope. Why do we want to know the neighbors? Why do we want to know? So you can So we can show them how awesome we are getting homes sold, right? We want them to see us in action. Because what is the perception is is that agents are lazy, right? They, they don't do anything. So we want the neighbors to see that we are active. We're, we're out there working, right? So we want to do a separate open house. Now the reason you don't want to invite them the same time. As the as the the buyers is because you can't tell the difference. They all look the same, <laughs> and when you have seventy people wandering through your open house, you don't know who your sellers are versus your buyers, right? So this strategy came about for for my agents to do a lot of listings, and that are they're like, you know, if I get a good buyer, that's great. But I'm a listings focused business. This was our way of strategizing to get just the just the people who might be selling our demographic there and then also do an open house. So here's how this strategy works. This is pretty cool. So, so first off, what we want to do is we want to plan ahead. And we want to go out, ideally go out on like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evening, door knock the neighborhood. Okay? Door knock the neighborhood with a fl flyer that says one of two things. Either in the evening on Thursday night, okay, between like four and six is usually a good time, I'm gonna have an exclusive neighbors only open house where just the neighbors in this area are invited. I'm gonna have wine and hors d'oeuvres, help 
support, now we're going to get them here with obligation to their neighbors. Help me support the Smiths in getting their home sold by coming and attending this event. And by the way, we spent about a week to two weeks preparing the Smiths house for sale. And you've got to see how beautiful this thing looks. Okay? So that's the setup. Okay, so we're going to door knock the neighbors, we're going to invite them, we're going to create obligation through the neighbor, right? Help the Smiths, you're the neighbor, let's, go, let's help them out. Come check this out, come have some hors d'oeuvres, we're going to tour their house, and then they'll help you get you some ideas. You don't have to stay very long, just pop in, okay? So you're going to do that either on Thursday night, don't do Friday night because Friday... Happy hour. People have plans, yeah, people got plans Friday. Or Saturday a.m., okay? So Saturday a.m., you would do it between like 9 and 11. And mimosas. And you're going to have mimosas, and yep. But it's going to be really short, neighbors only, Saturday morning. So it's either Thursday night or Saturday morning, okay? I remember Kate talking about that. Yeah. Did her Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. Yeah. It's good. So here's where agents mess this up. They blend them together. And they, they, they try to be efficient, and in real estate, we want to be effective, right? Commissions are huge, $15,000 commissions. Be effective. Don't be efficient, right? Don't be efficient here. So we're going to start here. We're going to door knock. Okay. So now I want to say this. It doesn't have to be you door knocking, okay? If you don't want to door knock, you can go out and hire some people, like one agent up in Boulder, um, her high school, her daughter, her daughter was, or I think it was her daughter, daughter, might not have been her daughter, but, um, somebody was in the high school cheerleading squad. And so they were like 17, 18. So they weren't like, they weren't 13, 14. Well, Let me be clear. <laughs> they were 17, 18. And they were trying to raise money for their cheerleading, for their cheerleading, um, trip. And so she said, I got a way for you to raise money. I'll pay you guys to go door knock this neighborhood for this open house. So they dressed in their cheerleading garb, went out and said, this agent is supporting our cheerleading squad, and we're coming out to announce announce this and, open house. Right? So she building, came up with that. I didn't come up with lots that. Lots of really relationships cool. and showing that they support their local community. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, that's that's awesome. great. Yeah. Um, so so here's the thing. Heather, Heather used to have people that would door knock for her. And um, we, we would just, um, you know, either through our sphere of relationships or sometimes we just hire and interview people off of Craigslist, make sure that they're dressed really well, they're professional, you have requirements, and then have them go out and door knock, okay? It doesn't have to be you, okay? But it does have to get done. Now, it's better if it's you. Let me make no, no mistake. If they see your face and then they see your face at the open house, it's going to be perfect, right? Because now it's familiarity, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, it just needs to get done. So you're going to door knock? Yes, you can call, but calling, again, is efficient. It's less effective. We want to lean on the side of effectiveness over efficiency, so door knocking is best. You're going to do the neighbors only open house, okay, on Thursday or Saturday morning. Which is, by the way, the property is going to go active in the MLS at the exact same time you start your open house on Saturday for the buyers. So you're going to flip it active, or, or you can do it active, but no showings until 11 a.m. Saturday. Here's why. You have your neighbor's open house. You show them your marketing. You show them how you stage the house. You show them how great it is. And then, and then they're watching to see how much demand hits that house. They're paying attention now. So when you set all your showings that they cannot start entering the property till Saturday at 11 a.m., okay, Saturday at 11 a.m., what's going to happen? Everybody's going to want it. Everybody's going to set up at Saturday at 11 a.m. Now your open house starts Saturday at 11 a.m. So you've got double traffic. It is going to be a zoo. It's going to be crazy. Now, supply and demand. When demand goes up, supply is low. What happens to price? Up. Yeah. Up how far? As far as you can go. As far as you can go. Okay. 
You want to get people bidding on that house? You got to have a lot of people there. Sets up scarcity. <sighs> Prices go up. And okay? then they put pressure on each other, and you don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to do anything. You're going to need that cheerleading squad there to direct traffic. That's what you're going to need. Okay. So, so now you're taking these people that were at your neighbor's only open house. They're watching, and this Saturday morning, like, like I just heard of an open house recently. They had to have the police come out and direct traffic. That's the kind of open house we want to have. Insanity open house. People out there, you got balloons, you got people kind of going around doing everything. And this whole thing is a production for these people. That's who we're doing it for. We're not doing it to sell the house because the house is going to sell. Right, but everybody benefits from it because the people who are selling get a higher price and the people who haven't decided to sell yet see that you actually do work your butt off. They see that you work your butt off. Right? This agent doesn't mess around. This agent is serious and knows what they're doing. Okay? So we're going to drive traffic to the open house. You can do the neighbor's open house between 9 and 11 or 9 and, say, 1030. Active on the market, showing start at 11 o'clock. And then the, the, the buyer's open house goes from 11 to 1. At the same time, all your showings are happening. And it is a frenzy. Okay? It's a crazy frenzy. Now, when do you accept offers? Tuesday. 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 All offers have to be in by Monday. Monday. And you're, you're, present, or you're, you're presenting, uh, Tuesday. Ex presenting and accepting Tuesday. Okay? Because this gives you the highest chance for multiple offers to come in. Okay? And the hardest part is, is it managing that self-control when you get a really good offer, but they say, if you don't take our offer by 5 o'clock tonight, we're walking. Okay, but somebody else is going to make the same or better offer, so keep waiting. We hope. Well, and we sometimes hope. it doesn't happen. Right, but can't you go back to that person and no. say, you really did have an excellent offer. Is it still on the table? Sure. You and can. be polite. And you've got to feel it out. Like You're going to know from your open house how much demand you're having, but you got to, you got to really be... You know, you got to hang on because that's a tough one, right? When somebody's doing the takeaway with you. So we want we want all offers in by Monday. Acceptance is Tuesday, okay? And now we get it accepted. And let's say we had five offers, right? Five offers. We can only take how many? We can only take one offer. What do we do with the other four offers? I say want to do that. Yeah, you can do, yeah, take a backup. You want to meet it or go by. Yeah, or there you go. You go back out to the neighbors. Right here's your script. Hey. Oh, I have a buyer for your house. Oh, okay. I remember. Hey, we had five offers on the house. Hey, remember I saw you last week? I knocked on your door. You didn't come to my neighbor's open house. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Believe it or not, we had 80 people through that open house. I'm sorry about the traffic. i got to apologize. I know it was a zoo that day, but guess what? We sold the house. We got $25,000 over asking, and I have four other contracts of other buyers that are interested in buying in this neighborhood. Who do you know? Is any of the neighbors talking about selling? Are you thinking about selling? When, when is it? If you were to sell, when would that be? Now you, you're tangible. You hold contracts in front of them. I mean, that's like when you go to buy a car and you show up with a pocket full of cash. Yeah. Your offer might be low, but they're paying attention. They're like, oh, all right, I'll take the cash. Okay? <laughs> okay? This strategy really, really, really works. Now, the reason I bring this up right now is there's a lot of open houses hitting the market right now. Or there's a lot of houses, listings coming on the market. This is going to be a great opportunity for us. Um, the other thing I want to mention on the open house signs, the open house signs. How many signs do you want to have out? A ton. What's a ton? I think 20. 20. I think that's a great number. 50. Yeah, 50 is a lot. So, so again... Like at your Banners. House, like. We get the the fuzzy guy that goes. <laughs> I put the sign tosser, you know. The windmills. The pinwheels. And now everybody's copying me. Yeah. Oh, Have you noticed smart. it? Yeah. 
I, all of a sudden, everybody's got windmills. It started. <laughs> so, 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 so here's the thing. They're shiny. They here's the thing. <laughs> On open house signs, you got to prepare, right? So the challenge is, is I would love to as a company, and, and I've done this before, is I bought 100 open house signs. They lasted literally like five weeks, right? And I kept sending out emails, agents, bring the open house signs back, bring the open house signs back. Now, they weren't the big frame ones. They were the corrugated, you know, inexpensive ones. And hey, nobody responds, nobody responds. And then I went over and helped one of my friend agents that we all know, and in her garage was about 15 of those signs. And I'm like, oh, interesting. You know, those emails they've been sending out, like, where's all the open house signs? There's 15 of them hanging in your garage wall. And she says, well, I'm going to do an open house. I need them. So we stopped supplying open house signs, just for the record, because I don't get them back. And because here's the challenge. You as an agent, if I tell you I have open house signs available to you, and then your weekend's coming up, and I can't aggregate 20 signs, then I'm letting you down. Right. So what I recommend is buying, you know, about anywhere about 20, 25 of the inexpensive corrugated ones. OK. And then buy five to 10 of the nice ones, the nice frame ones um, that and you put the nice ones out in the neighborhood and then you do the 20, 25 around and you want them branded with your name. Put your name on it because all these people that are coming to this open house, all the neighbors, you want to remind them, hey, this is you, this is you, this is you, right? That you're doing the open house, that it's not just another open house, that you've got to tie it all back together. You could post it on Neighbors Next Door, Neighborhood, what is that website, Neighborhood, whatever. Is it the, is that? Oh, um, nextdoor.com. Nextdoor.com, yeah. You can post open houses, I think. You just can't advertise that your, your business the, or, some, or something that you're doing originally. You can have the homeowner. I'm not good with rules. <laughs> yeah, the homeowner. <laughs> no, 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 really really an open house. Yeah. The actual homeowner can do it and they just say, hey, we're having an open house. Do you know anybody? The owner could post it. There you go. See, perfect. Yeah. There's always a way around. Okay. So, so, also, I will tell you this, but I'm not going to name names. There are a few agents that are with our company that have more listings than they can do open houses on. Pay attention to that. Friend all the agents that are in our office, and when you see them post, I got a new listing coming on the market. I'm gonna hold it open, right? I wanna do a neighbor's open house. Get in there, get these, get, I'm telling you, this works. This really works well, okay? I have a question for my mom. Yes. Who is that? I'll do them. Um, the serving alcohol. Yes. I hear a lot of agents like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Don't don't serve red You're the broker. Red. Oh my god. What's our spill on the carpet? Oh, okay. don't spill red wine on the carpet. Right. What's your concern, broker? First. My concern is that you're getting like someone who's lingering at the morning mimosa thing and they get in their car and go take their kid to soccer and now yeah. you're responsible for it because you serve them. Could be. Okay. I don't know. Just saying, be careful. I don't know. Ask your broker about that. I don't know. What I that. just said, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think if anybody's having more than two, you might want to dial it back. But, uh, All right. Just... But I don't know. I don't know the rules on that. Could you put like a do to whatever, like limit one drink? Unless, like, if you're driving a car, <laughs> just limit <laughs> one. <laughs> See, me, I would just be like, you know what, I love you dearly, yeah, and I, I want to sell trouble. your house, but I'm kind of concerned because no, are you taking the kids to the yeah. yeah. soccer yeah. here in a minute? Or yeah. Are you yeah. watching? Yeah. But I guess if they're in the neighborhood, maybe they are. Maybe they're home for the night and they're not leaving anymore. But well, you could you could always just hold on to the wine bottles, and they got to come to you, right? Yeah. You know, okay, you get a little bit more, and you're done. I'm cutting you off. I don't know, honestly, Heather. I don't know what the liability on that is, um, but I know, I know that um, that obviously, when we talk about the neighbors only open house evening kind of thing, having the wine, the cheese, it's it's you know the the lighting of the house, it's an experience that we're trying to portray. Yes. In the morning, the mimosa thing, that kind of stuff, I don't know if that's a big deal or not. Um, like if I was doing a morning one, I would probably 
find like um, a really cool caterer or somebody where I would have them like um, or a food that they would be excited to to be, to experience and say, oh come, I'm having I'm having Chef Lloyd come in and he's making you know this Laura, special like, quiche or something. You know? <laughs> What's that? Stop, Laura. <laughs> Your can of peanuts. Yeah. She had a lot of can of peanuts. You can yeah. buy little quiches at Costco. You can yes. do some cinnamon rolls. I mean, the only thing I would caution something. you about, be really careful about buying those plastic tray things where you're just popping the tray off. Um, no. I went to, a friend of mine lists uh, a lot of sports figures houses, and he had, um, I won't say the sports figures house, who the sports figure was, he had his house up for sale. And I thought, oh, this is cool, you know, let's go. And it was a broker open, and I show up, and it's literally like the crackle pop, you know, open things and the so croissants. And that's guys, I think, because I, I, I tell you, I do pretty plates. Yeah, yeah if, if you plate, plate it, yes, yeah. yeah. Because it really is about creating the experience. Right. Because I saw that, and I thought, if, if, I, was, if I was a sports figure, and I saw this is your way of representing my house, you're done. Like, sorry. Because the person that's buying this house, it was like a $2 million house. Oh, my. You know. Oh, yeah. And I think you would have a caterer. I would. I would have a caterer have. and maybe um, a cousin running the bar. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, there was an open house that was a great homes that we back to that was probably $1.2 million. And they did catering in the morning and they did a band in the afternoon. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. It was It was a killer open house. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, think it, you got to step up here. Again. That's the only reason I bring that up because because <laughs> people will do that, right? They'll do right. they'll just run. Oh, I've Costco seen it. And, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, don't do that. I've ha I've been to open houses because I critique them. <laughs> yeah. Just, I just have a little obsession about going to open houses and stuff. Anyway, I've had them where they don't even greet you. You don't even know who the agent is. Yeah. I'm like, so who's who's the agent here? Mm -hmm. and finally, it's oh, yeah. it's the person dressed like in a house coat. Yeah. And there's slippers well, in the and, kitchen. And on like, that point, let's address kidding. that too, is how do you get people to register? That's always a hard thing. Mm -hmm. um, get a tablet or an iPad, and there's a whole open house app. I don't know what it is, but there's something about handing somebody that, that, that tablet that they feel obligated. And another layer to that is to have somebody stand at the door and just say, because remember, supply and demand. You got 75 people lined up. They're standing at the front door and they say, the sellers requires anybody who enters their house to register with us. Can you please register? And if they say no, there is no law that says you have to let them in, right? As long as you're asking everybody, okay? If you're profiling, that will be a problem, right? So but if you're asking everybody who comes in, even the real estate agent, oh, I need to, did you, did you set a showing? Yes, I set a showing. Great, let me have your card. You can come in. I'll register you in the app. You know, next person comes in. Oh, are you, are you with an agent? No, I'm not. Great. Fill us out on, the, on, the, on here. But How would you go about turning someone away without like looking like a big fat jerk face? Mm -hmm. You just tell, you put the obligation on the seller. Okay. The seller asks everybody to register yeah. in their home before they enter the home. Yep. Yeah.